Hello everyone and welcome to Physical Science. We are going to do Unit 1, Section 5, Physical versus Chemical Changes. So let's figure out what the difference between a physical and a chemical change is. Well, let's start with properties. What does it mean to have a physical property and what does it mean to have a chemical property? Well, a physical property is something that can be observed um, without changing the identity of the substance. So things like color or mass or things that you can just observe without it altering it. So it can be observed without changing identity of substance. That's in direct um, op opposition of a chemical property. A chemical property is when you actually change it into a different substance. So it's something that you will see when you change it into something new. Um, so this describes the ability of a substance to change, to undergo changes in identity. So when it goes from one thing to another. So let's look at some examples and figure out if it isn't changing the identity or if it is. If it's not changing the identity of the substance, it's going to be a physical property. And if it is changing what the um, substance actually is, we're going to be talking about chemical properties. So let's write down some examples. So examples, melting point. Okay, let's think, is it changing the actual substance? And I'm gonna use water, for example, good old H2O. Well, water in the f solid form is called ice, but ultimately it's just water. Um, water in its liquid form, we just term as water, and then water in its gaseous form, we just consider water vapor. But it's still just H2O, just water. Has it changed? Is it, has it become something entirely new? No. So a melting point would be a physical property. All right, let's look at the next one, flammable. If you catch something on fire, if it is flammable, is it staying the same thing or is it turning into something entirely new? So let's think about wood. If you take a piece of wood and you catch it on fire, it gets turned into ash. Is ash the same thing as wood? Is it the same substance? No. So that would be a chemical property. All right, let's look at density. Density, whether you have a heavy object, a lot of stuff in a given space, or not so much stuff in a given space, do you still have the same thing? Yes, it's still the same substance. So that is a physical property. If something is magnetic, are you changing that substance from one substance to another? No, so that would be a physical property. If something tarnishes in air, so if you have something that is exposed to oxygen, it is actually reacting with that oxygen and it is no longer the same substance. Rust is one of the things um, that combines with oxygen and water in the air um, and is going to turn that metal into a brand new substance. Well, if it's a brand new substance, that would be a chemical property. So let's look at physical versus chemical changes. So let's write physical change. Well, this is changing the form of a substance without changing its identity. So put a star beside form because it's really just changing forms but not substances just like we were talking about with ice. Um, water, H2O, is water, whether it is in its solid, liquid, or gas form. So a physical change is a change that does not change its identity. It has to directly like um, what we we're talking about with physical versus chemical properties. If you have a physical change, the properties remain the same. It's the same thing, so why would the properties change? They would stay the same, of course. Well, if you have a chemical change, this is a change in the identity of a substance. You no longer have the same thing. So changes the identity. And that means that you have a new substance. Well, they're not gonna have the same properties. They're not going to be exactly the same. Um, so the products have different properties. So out of this, we really just wanna understand the difference between physical and chemical properties or changes. So if it's still the same substance, what you start off with and what you end up with, it is a physical change. 
if you end up with something new, then it is a chemical change. So let's look for signs. How do we know it's a chemical change? What, what should I be looking for? Because um, I'm not really sure how to identify it. So let's write signs of chemical change. The first thing is an unexpected change in color. Now we know that red and blue make purple. So if you take a red substance and a blue substance and it makes a purple, that is not what we're talking about here. That would be if I, like an example of a change in color that's unexpected is if you added two clear substances and when they combine they turn bright pink. So like white plus white equals orange or something crazy. So if you combine two substances that are, um, when you combine the colors or that are different or colors that you end up with an unexpected color change, that would be a chemical change. The second thing is the formation of a gas. If it makes bubbles and gas. So if you start seeing bubbles coming up when you added two things that shouldn't be bubbling, then that is probably a chemical change. Now the exception to this is boiling of water. Um, because boiling does make bubbles, but you're really not making anything new there. You're still just changing the form of water. Water still just turns into water. But if you create a gas, an unexpected gas, like if you take two cold things and combine them together and then they start making bubbles. The next thing is a formation of a precipitate. Now you may be wondering what a precipitate is. That is when you combine two liquids and when you add them, some sort of solid starts falling out of the solution and precipitates down, like precipitation. So when you end up with a solid in the bottom of a liquid, when you combine two things and they fall out. And the last one is an unexpected change in temperature. Again, I'm going to use water as an example for what is not an unexpected change in temperature. If you take water and you put it on a, a hot plate, you expect it to go up. But what if you take two cold substances and you add them together and you don't add heat and suddenly they end up super hot, which happens in the formation of um, soap when you add lye to water before you add the um, fat to it. So if you take lye and water, um, then it will take two cold things and it will turn super, super hot. So these are the things that you know, if you see all of these happening, or even one of these things happening, um, then you have a chemical change. You are forming something entirely new. It is no longer the same substance. So examples, let's look at them. Rusting iron. Well, if iron is normally um, black or like a metallic color and it turns red when you have it exposed to air. Is that an unexpected color change? Yes, so that is a chemical change. Something dissolves in water. So it's dissolving in water. I'm not making light or heat or color change unexpectedly. If I'm just dissolving it in water, is there anything new being made? If I take salt and put it in water, do I have anything new? Well, I mean, I have salt water, but it's still just salt and water, so that's a physical change. If I burn a log, I'm taking the log and I'm burning it. Is it creating light? Yes. Is it creating heat? Yes. Is it turning into something entirely new? Yes. So that would be a chemical change. And another thing about chemical changes is you can't take them in the opposite direction. Okay. Um, melting ice. Uh, so if we have melting ice, well, it's turning into a liquid, but it's still just water. So that would be a physical change. Now, grinding of spices. I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you put spices into a grinder and you um, break them into smaller pieces, have you created anything new? No. So that would be a physical change. So anything that you just break into pieces, physical change. So when we are looking at chemical versus physical changes, we want to make sure that we ask ourselves one question. Is anything new made? And if it is not, if there is no new substance, then it is absolutely a physical change. So if no, it's a physical change. 
if something brand new is made and it is not the same substance anymore, water is no longer water, it's oxygen or something along those lines, then you would have a chemical change. So if you were going to have to break it down into one basic question, is anything new made? Is anything completely changed? No, it's physical. Yes, it's chemical. All right, have a great day, and I will see you next time.